Hello and welcome friends. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about one of the coolest and most common geologic features that you will often have a chance to see in the field in your own life. And these are called deltas. And deltas form where rivers meet standing bodies of water like lakes and oceans. So in this video, I'm going to first talk about what is a delta and why do they form. Then we're going to talk about some of the river processes, meandering, avulsion, and lobe switching. And then we'll finish by looking at delta stratigraphy and progradation. So as I said, deltas are deposits of sediment where rivers enter lakes and oceans. So imagine a river coming down through here. Now rivers have current, right? That water's moving very quickly, and it's able to actually move grains of sand, or even pebbles or cobbles. So rivers are competent to move sediment. However, when they hit lakes and oceans, there's no current. So they're forced to drop that sediment right there. They can't move the sediment any further. So what happens is sediment tends to build up at the mouths of rivers, right where they meet lakes or oceans. And you can also see in this picture that deltas are often characterized by a complex network of meandering and anastomosing channels. They're one of the few places on Earth that actually have what are called distributary channels, right here, distributary. That means that instead of coming together, the river channels coming together, they actually split and start to bifurcate as they come towards the delta. So here, this main channel is splitting into three separate channels which kind of wind around as they make their way to the ocean. So here's what that looks like in satellite view. This is the Mississippi River Delta, just below New Orleans, Louisiana. And here's the main Mississippi, and you can see all these channels uh, bifurcating and splitting off. So these are distributary channels. And also, please note that all of the land you can see in this picture, all the green areas, that is actually vegetation that is formed on recently deposited sediment. So this whole thing you're seeing, the white and the green, is actually sediment that has been relatively recently delivered into the Gulf of Mexico. So you can think of this as the Mississippi River is kind of building its own platform and then it's advancing out over that platform. And that's really what a delta is. And then here's just another view looking down the channel. Huge uh, barge here, so you can really get the scale of this, is absolutely immense. This is looking out towards the Gulf of Mexico, going downstream. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about these river processes, because they're very important in shaping the delta and also interpreting deltas that have formed in the past. So as we mentioned, uh, rivers tend to meander laterally across the delta surface. So if this is a river channel and it's flowing downstream away from us like this out to the sea over here. What happens is this channel uh, doesn't want to stay in the exact same form year over year. It wants to, to move and meander. And specifically, what tends to happen is we get erosion on the outer bank and we get deposition on the inner bank of a curve. So whenever the river makes a bend, it erodes the outside and then deposits sediment on the inside. And this allows that channel to actually move over time. So what is the sedimentary record of that? If you cut down into the cross section of the sediments that are deposited during this process, we actually see what are called lateral accretion deposits. Lateral accretion deposits. And these form as this point bar is migrating across the channel from right to left. And these tend to be kind of gently dipping uh, deposits of sand that are kind of stacked on top of each other in tabular beds. But importantly, they are dipping like this, and they're often covered with bar top deposits. So if you looked at that in cross section, you might see a stratigraphy that looks something like this. You're dipping accretionary deposits overlain by your, your planar bar top deposits. So as these channels are migrating along, uh, every so often, often during a flood, we'll have what's called a channel avulsion event. The river becomes too swollen and powerful, pushing against its outer bank, 
and then eventually actually breaks over or breaches the channel bank and can establish a whole new channel. So that's called avulsion. And in this case, the river has avulsed through its bank here, and it's actually now spilling down into this kind of field and actually creating its own little delta where it's spilling down into this. It's called a crevasse splay. But what's important here about avulsions is that avulsions are what allow the river to deliver sediment to different parts of the delta over time. So this is a mock-up of the Mississippi River Delta. Here comes the main Mississippi down here from left to right. And currently it's delivering sediment to this delta lobe, number six. But what we can see in the past is that sediment has been delivered to these other lobes. And essentially, the river has taken different paths to the ocean at different times. And that switching is accomplished by channel avulsion. So what's really important about this is when you look down on a delta, like here, let's look down on the Mississippi Delta, what you're seeing is really the product of a river that's been moving around to different places over time. It was here for a while, then it was here, and so on. And today, the modern Mississippi River is delivering sediment out here to number six. Okay, so let's move towards finishing this video by talking about delta progradation and stratigraphy. And in this part of the video, we're going to really look at deltas in cross section. So before we were looking down from above in map view, now we're looking at a cross section or a slice that's taken uh, through the delta. In this case, rivers are delivering sediment from the left. So they're coming in from the left, delivering sediment into the ocean. And so, as we said, sediment is going to pile up here where the river meets the ocean. Now, over time, more and more sediment arrives, and so there's, uh, we need to push that sediment further out into the ocean, and that happens by delta progradation. It deposits one bed, another bed, another bed, another bed, builds its own platform, and that platform marches left to right out into the ocean. Now, what's happening on top? As it's delivering loads of sand to the delta front, it's also now flowing over its own delta top. So the river is now flowing out, literally flowing further out into the ocean than it was when it first started. So this is called progradation, and it allows both the delta and the river to basically advance out further into the ocean or the lake. So this is what really makes these constructional deposits. Now, importantly, uh, we have different depositional environments during this process that lead to very different rock types. So if you can imagine, uh, the environment out here is quite deep, calm water, and we're going to get deposition of mud and organic material out in the deep water. The environment in here, basically where the river meets the ocean, is going to be high energy, it's going to be a lot sandier and more gravel rich. So when we combine all these processes, this gives us our typical delta stratigraphy. So a mature delta, again in cross section, might look something like this. Um, at the bottom, we have what are called bottom set beds. These are finer grained horizontal layers of sediment deposited in deep water well out in front of the delta front. So because fine sediment contains a lot of organics and clays, that's what these are rich in. Above that, we have the four-set beds right here. These tend to be dipping about 30 degrees, tend to be made of gravel and sand that often is kind of falling or slumping down the delta front. And then above that, we have what are called the top-set beds. These tend to be horizontal. They tend to be made of sand and gravel, often gravel. And these really represent essentially that river kind of migrating out over the top of the delta. So we often think of topset beds as essentially being river deposits. So these are our three types of deposits. And here's what they might look like in cross section. This is a small lake delta. This is not the Mississippi, but it's a good example. We can see here our four set beds are dipping about 30 degrees. You see them dipping here. And we see here they're made of sand. 
but over here they're actually made more of chunkier gravel, perhaps from a flood event or a uh, submarine gravity flow. So then we see a pretty sharp contact here where those dipping four set beds are overlain by the top sets. So these are horizontal and they tend to be gravel rich. These are essentially our river deposits as the river migrated out across the top of the delta. And finally, let's look at the bottom set beds. So here's a drill core taken into some bottom set beds. Uh, in this case, we see that they are finely laminated um, because this is fine grained sediment settling to the bottom of the quiet ocean. And they contain a lot of organics, clay and mud. So this is gonna generally make them uh, thinly bedded and also easily erodible. These tend to be weak, soft sediments, uh, rich in organic material. So I wanna close, bring this all together. Who cares about deltas? Well, uh, of course the oil industry cares because this is the source of a lot of our oil and gas deposits on earth. But also recently there's been uh, exploration of the Jezero Delta on Mars and as soon as the Perseverance rover landed, it took this photo of a, strat of a stratigraphic remnant of the delta called Kodiak. And this is so cool when they zoom in, they can actually see the full stratigraphy. We've got the, the flat, thinly laminated bottom set beds. We've got the 30 degree dipping four set beds. And then we've got our flat gravel rich top set beds. So we can see the delta stratigraphy right here on Mars, recording an ancient lake. How cool is this? And what's neat is because we understand how deltas work, we can infer that these top sets must record lake level. They must record that river advancing out. Also, if we want to look for organic material, signs of life, we know we should probably go look in these bottom sets. So our understanding of deltas on Earth helps us study for signs of past life on Mars. Thanks for listening, everybody.